The governorship election petition tribunal sitting in Kaduna has sacked Governor Obasani of the All Progressive Congress and declared the 2023 governorship election of the state inconclusive. The tribunal drew in its resumed proceeding and Thursday in a split ratio decision of two to one declared the election inconclusive and directed that a supplementary election should be conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission within 90 days. A three-man panel led by Justice Victor of Yahweh ordered a rerun of the election in 24 polling units in seven wards of four local governments consisting of 16,300 registered voters. The verdict was announced via Zoom after the judges shunned the physical hall. The People's Democratic Party had added to the tribunal to challenge the election of Ubasani as the sitting governor of Kaduna State on the grounds of alleged irregularities and electoral fraud, saying that its candidate, Isa Mohammed Ashiru, won the election. Meanwhile, the Kaduna State government and the All Progressive Con Congress have insisted that the election of Ubasani as governor was upheld by the tribunal. The council to the APC says the tribunal has struck out the petition by the PDP for want of diligent prosecution and so cannot reverse itself to say the election was inconclusive. Uh, you know, court uh, arrived at decision based on the uh, submissions and argument of lawyers and, and uh, uh, the majority of the tribunal judges decided that the election was inconclusive and one judge affirmed the election. So, and the, decision, the majority decision of the court is that the election was inconclusive. Do we believe the materials we placed before you were sufficient enough for the court to, to, to have even declared our candidate the, the, the winner of the election because we know um, uh, PDP won the election in Kaduna State? Then, uh, what I'm telling you is we'll go into this election and definitely we'll come up with tears. The tribunal has dismissed the petition filed by the PDP. That is the ruling of the tribunal in the morning. But, you know, by the provision of the Constitution, they are required to also consider the petition on merit. So on merit, two of them said that uh, election is supposed to be conducted in 22 polling units because the number of the voters there exceed the margin of lead. But they have said that the petitioners, the petition, the PDP wanted it to be declared as the winner of the election. The, the tribunal said that they have no proof that. They allege that there are corrupt practices perpetrated by APC. They said they have no proof that. So in, in essence, as of today, the PDP petition is dismissed by the tribunal. Now, joining us on Nigeria tonight is Azari Yusuf, spokesperson of the Big Tent, to get a clear picture of the latest uh, political developments in Kaduna State. And one welcome to you, Zari, and thanks for joining us on Nigeria tonight. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Zari, the tribunal declared the governorship election inconclusive and ordered INEC to conduct a rerun of the election in four local government areas. And the state governments are celebrating victory at the tribunal, saying the election of Governor Barsani was upheld. Could you help us understand what exactly is going on in Kaduna? Well, I think I'd say for, you know, the APC, whether the lawyer or, uh, you know, uh, the governor himself, uh, I'd say I, I see an unhealthy uh, optimism there. Uh, quite frankly, I think from what the PDP lawyer said and the APC lawyer said, uh, there's a bit of a misunderstanding, I think, on the side of the APC lawyer, even though he kept saying, of course, what the PDP wanted to be declared winner did not really happen, but that the votes from the 24 polling units from those four local governments that, uh, you know, the rerun that was ordered in those places uh, have more votes than the margin. Uh, I think that's what uh, the APC is very much afraid of. And so if that is the case, then by default, it's um, inconclusive. And um, I would say it's, 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 it's victory for the, you know, would say judiciary for the electoral mm -hmm. system and all of that. But, you know, the APC just went on. Uh, I, I first saw the speech of the governor himself, of, of the APC, you know, the APC, the SAT governor, 
And quite frankly, it did look like something that was pre-written. And um, because possibly their lawyer was not able to interpret that very well, so it just it did look as if it was upheld, but there was no such thing as upholding it. So exactly mm -hmm. uh, whether it was optimism or it was just uh, a deliberate move to uh, sort of um, just have their way, something a bit tyrannical, I don't really know. But quite frankly, uh, I think that was a sad. And then uh, we will just look forward for the rerun in those uh, polling units and those four local governments. Now, Zari, let's look at the mathematics of it. The margin between the APC and the PDP during the okay. March 18th governorship election was just a total. Okay. It was about 10,000 votes. Now, the total registered voters in the contested areas is about 16,000. Realizing the That's usual right. low turnout of voters, do you foresee anything changing? Uh, in the rerun, or do you think uh, we're, we're going to see a heightened campaign and, you know, more people will come out of this 16,000-plus uh, registered voters uh, to perhaps make a final uh, decision in who is the legitimate governor of uh, Kaduna State? Yes, a lot could change because, um, to begin with, when you look at the margin itself of that 10,000, you would know that Kaduna shared something in common with uh, Nasarawa State, where at some point it was as if the transmission of results were halted, you know, uh, delayed, and then all of a sudden results started coming in, and then there were celebrations in this camp, all of a sudden celebrations in the other camp, and all of that. So uh, the APC did hold that power to dictate a whole lot of things. and. And not to take too long, I will take you back to what happened in 2019, where I would say, just the way you have the case now, the APC didn't exactly uh, win, I would put it that way, where there was a leading margin between the PDP led with, I think, more than 30,000 votes. But then out of nowhere popped, I think, about 515 or 513,000 votes, where almost 400 went to the APC and about 100 and something went to, mm -hmm. you know, the PDP, giving automatically the APC a lead of more than uh, 200,000 uh, and then, you know, returning uh, Governor Erufai. So that did happen. And I think uh, the PDP did a lot of work. But like I said, close to, you know, closing in whatever victory they had been two uh, leading uh, parties in the state in the gubernatorial election. There were a whole lot of delays, there were a whole lot of irregularities, and I would even say criminalities, that ended up squeezing the whole thing and getting those uh, 10,000 votes. So exactly whether uh, those 10,000 votes actually went to uh, you know, the APC or not, one isn't really sure. And I think that's what they would dread uh, to be put to test uh, when the rerun comes. So definitely a whole lot, I believe, will change. Thank you very much, Zuri, for giving us that uh, uh historical perspective of how things have panned out in Kaduna State politics in the past. Now, away from politics, Kaduna State has witnessed frequent incidents of attacks on communities and killings of dozens of people in the last few weeks. Uh, and, I mean, it's becoming a reoccurring theme. What do you think is the, sense, is, is the main cause of this development, and how can it be checked? Well, first of all, I would say to you in the case of Kaduna State, there is, um, unfortunately, there is, a, I don't know whether to call it deliberately or a misunderstanding. The issue there is not being properly defined. Uh, a whole lot of times we talk about banditry, we talk about kidnaps and all of that, but uh, even by the confession of the past governor of the state, we have a very deadly uh, terrorist group that have made their camp in Kaduna. And I think what should uh, make it more dangerous would be that I think the strongest military formation I've seen in the country would be in Kaduna, yet they found it as a safe uh, heaven. And you would realize, of course, there are kidnappings, but when it comes to bloodshed and matters of killing, it tends to be characteristic of a particular region. So we want to de-emphasize, uh, there's a deliberate attempt, attempt to de-emphasize the ethno-religious tone in that case. And the truth of the matter is we cannot deal with the case of Kaduna in isolation from other parts of the you know, middle belt. And uh, best as I could say, to my understanding, to the understanding of the people, especially in the region where most of the deaths have been recorded, it's, uh, it's a systematic genocide. 
but uh, people wouldn't want to really admit it that way. Uh, mm. There are so many names it goes. They say Parma had a cr clash, retaliations, and all of that. But that is not really true. So I think first, a proper definition of the case would profile solutions 50%, if it is defined properly okay. as what it is, rather than calling it. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I was going to say thank you to you, Zari Yusuf. Uh, thanks uh, for your okay. time uh, with us at Nigeria Tonight. Spokesperson right. for the Big Tent. All right. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we do appreciate. Yes, thank you so much. It's been a privilege, uh, an honor being here. And, uh, next time, hopefully yes. see you again. We look forward to engaging with you uh, in the nearest future.